Hey, welcome back to the Canatech podcast. We have another logo. So first of all, Eric, I want to congratulate you and Surfside. Uh, you made the cut over at Marijuana Venture Magazine. You are on the 2022 tech stack ecosystem chart. So uh, congratulations. We we did a lot of research and we one of the main things is we, we needed to see commitment um, mm-hmm. from the logo to the space. So you know, it's easy to say, boy, I saw a Dell uh, laptop at a dispensary. Dell's a Canatech company. Uh, they're not. <laughs> but, <laughs> but but you are. So tell me about Surfside. What's your business model? Thanks. And I appreciate you uh, giving us the time here. It's great to be uh, on the show. Um, Surfside is, in short, a marketing and data analytics platform. And obviously, we have a keen focus on cannabis industry and and specifically cannabis consumer behaviors. Um, So what we do is we activate and manage digital media campaigns uh, across a variety of multi-state operators, single state operators, brands, delivery platforms. And uh, as my my shirt says, uh, our mantra is exactly that, measure what matters. Yeah, we we measure outcomes and that's really one of the keen uh, differentiators uh, in how we go about being able to show what the investment on uh, the data enrichment side that leads to uh, media activation to reach specific consumers that translates to sales. It's really what we do um, at our core. So at your core, uh, what I'm hearing is maybe, well, maybe you're split 50-50, a marketing agency that can do placements, paid media placements, and 50% analytics. Is that is that about right? Or it's one more than the other? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, the, the, the media the media activation and media agency, we do offer managed service media. Um, and I think a lot of it, I come from more of a traditional retail marketing background um, with big branded uh, CPG manufacturers, consumer electronics, automotive. Um, a lot of times they have their own agencies. Um, my experience with like the insurance industry, they tended to take things in house where they wanted to really hold on to a lot of what they were doing and really control how they buy media. Um, and given the limitations uh, from a regulatory standpoint and also just from a policy standpoint internally uh, with some of the larger platforms like the Googles, Facebooks, Instagrams, Meta, um, everyone is, is pretty understanding that that's, it, it's funny because it's doable and some that we work with try, but it's not a very stable environment. Um, you hear lots of stories of brands and cannabis retailers getting shut down, they lose their following, um, I think one time in my history, I listened to someone on a panel. Uh, they say, yeah, your Instagram strategy should be to set up about 10 Instagram accounts because nine of them are going to get shut down. I'm like, that's not really a good strategy. We seek qualified inventory against qualified consumers uh, across big branded publishers. Um, and that was really the turning point where we saw probably like 2018 is when we got up and running. Um combine the pandemic, combine more states coming online, combine publishers understanding that this is a viable category that can generate real revenue for them from an advertising standpoint. That's really where we started seeing an inflection point. COVID and the pandemic really accelerated that in a lot of ways. Uh, but the three, the three components is really a data management platform. So we can ingest consumer data, first party data coming from these retailers and brands. We can give them more visibility around what these consumers are doing because uh, effectively we see about 300 million total people, consumers tied to digital devices, desktop, laptop, connected TVs. Wow. We string all that together. So we, in essence, see a much wider view than the core of, of first party data that uh, a, a large multi-state operator uh, or a big brand um, has. And that might be through their customer relationship management, their CRM, their loyalty programs. So we're able to string all this together, give them more specificity around those um those consumers and their consumer behavior, and then really serve ads to them on these devices and then measure the outcomes because of integrations that we've done over the past several years um, across the ERPs, all the e-com platforms, uh, the point of sale platforms, um, the loyalty and CRM email platforms. We, we were pretty agnostic in that regard. So we're able to see everything, hook it together, serve ads to consumers, and then measure what those outcomes look like. Yeah, I think I'll keep my day job. Um, so tell me, <laughs> Tell me about the New Jersey Canna Business Association. You're the marketing committee lead. What's the story over there? So the story is, is, is uh, it's a story of ups and downs as uh, Jersey and a lot of other states have gone through uh, a pretty arduous process. So I got involved with this as I 
took what I was doing in the traditional retail marketing and advertising world. Um, and this was 20, late 2017 um, when our, our, our fair governor Murphy just got elected to office and he was going to legalize cannabis in the first 100 days of his uh, governorship. Um, it took about a thousand days to do that, but we got there. Um, so hats off to, to Governor Murphy. Um, so I saw an opportunity to get involved. Um, and as I'm seeing more people come into the industry, really the first thing I, t- I tell them is like, look, get involved with a local uh, yeah, commerce, uh, a chamber of commerce. Um, we do that a lot at Surfside. We're involved with a lot of the chambers in the different states and, and municipalities. But for me, it was you know more personal. I, did, I grew up outside Philadelphia. I resided, uh, resided in New Jersey for about 16 years, 17 years. Um, and I just started getting a line. I was going to their events and I just saw an opening and Scott Rudder, who was one of the leads at the time, um, we just struck up a conversation and told them what I was doing, which was prior to Surfside. It was very similar. I, I launched a, a platform called Good Harvest Company, which was um, acquired by Surfside uh, just before the pandemic hit. Um, but between my marketing background, which was a, a need that they had, a few of the other individuals that are involved um, with different uh, skill sets, we just kind of banded together. And I thought it was a good use of uh, volunteer time uh, to get involved. And now we're getting closer to adult use actually coming to light and people can actually start purchasing uh, once the uh, the levels of, of um, product are there to keep the medical market satisfied. Um, I see a lot more opportunities coming where we'll really start doing more oh, yeah and get more amplified. Absolutely. And I, I've always, I concur. I've always felt the same uh, uh, three, three years ago at South by Southwest. And I'm just mm-hmm. finishing up the one this year, but three years ago in 19, they had uh, yet again, a cannabis track. And mm-hmm. there, there was a mom there who uh, didn't, didn't want marijuana legalized, you know, kids in high school. Mm-hmm. And I talked to her, uh, you know, in the hallway for about 15 minutes and, said, you know, you really should get involved. You really should get involved with either, you know, the Texas trade groups or the Mm -hmm. meetups or whatever we have here in Texas. Um, Even if you're opposed, get involved, because I think it makes for a better um, result, right? Uh, You know what I'm trying to say? (laughs) It's it's education. I mean, so much of this is education. And and I had very similar experiences, some of it being involved with the NJCBA and, and going down to Trenton, um, and, and listening to like Senator Scatari getting up, who was really leading a lot of the initiatives. Um, and, it, you know, like anything, there were constituents in the gall- gallery that I would interact with. And, and it was the same thing, the, the no pot buttons. And this is this is just another thing that's going to get into the hands of our children. And you know, I just I I tried to appeal to them as a parent. I tried to appeal to them as an advocate. Um, I had a medical card for a number of years, use it you know, effectively for different treatments. Um, and once you kind of get on that level and have more of a discussion, it's amazing how that opens up because the reality is your kids, if they want it, are going to get it. And do you well, want them? Yeah. Do you want them getting it from questionable sources where it's not tested, it's, it's not sold in, a, in an environment, and you can also benefit from the taxes and in a regulated environment? you have so much more control. And I'll even translate that even further when, when we're working with marketers. I hear a lot in the marketing world, especially in, in the cannabis vertical, everyone wants that, that brand identity and brand loyalty. It's like the first thing you have to do is educate the consumers on not so much the brand. Your brand means nothing if they have no idea what your product does or why they should be using yeah. this strain versus that strain or this consumption method versus that consumption method. Once you start dialing that in and the consumers and a lot of times when we work with brands, particularly in new markets, it's less about the noise that, get, that can be created about what a cool logo this is or what a cool brand this is. It's really taking it and it takes a little more time. So it's getting the brand awareness down and getting a lot of this upper funnel awareness that can bring those consumers in, educate them on why. And once they understand why, then they're more willing to try it. And then once they understand that this can actually help them, maybe even more effectively than some other remedies they're utilizing, particularly uh, you know, pharmaceuticals, which obviously there's, there's a lot of addiction issues around on that, um, that's when you can really start getting into the outcome-driven um, opportunities and, and showing that we show this ad to the right 
cohort of individuals and we saw actual transactions happen as a result and there was a multiple on that and that's really what a cmo or a head of marketing really wants to see how many dollars am i putting in and how many dollars am i getting out is there a multiple i'm going to reinvest that multiple back in so i can now reach more people all right we'll make that the final word um hey jenny uh if you could uh eric if well let me invite you maybe the the second half of the year we could check in on how new jersey's doing if you don't mind like fall quarter Absolutely. That'd be great. Love to come back. All right. All right. Well, thank you for your time. And again, congratulations, sir. You are a logo. Doesn't quite thank have you. a spring as Iron Man. Right here. <laughs> right here. As long as it, it's always, it's always, it's, if it's in good company, I'm happy to be part of that logo group. <laughs> All right. Thank take you. care.